Welcome back to the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. I'm Ed Holinsky. Glad you could join us here today. Got another great guest here. We're taking another trip down memory lane. Uh, another sports writer from the Tonawanda News in the Western New York area, the one and the only Pat Murray. Pat, good to catch up with you. Finally, good to meet you. How's things in the heart of Texas these days? Uh, a little bit rainy right now, but we needed it after a bit of a drought we had. I'll tell you, I missed the summers back in Buffalo in Western New York. I do not miss the winters. Well, funny you should say that because that's one hell of a backdrop that you got, the, the old 435 River Road and uh, a, a winter scene. So uh, we're shooting this here in summer right now. So how appropriate it is, you know, for a winter wonderland uh, at the Tonawanda News? Yeah, I, I do miss. There's a lot of stuff I miss about the Tonawanda News. It's really where I kind of cut my teeth into journalism. And I still tell people, I left Western New York in 2009 to come down here to Southeast Texas. I still say working for the Time One News was probably my favorite job in my career. We had the ability to do a lot of things, and we had a lot of uh, schools, uh, a lot of good sports at that point. Um, you were at the Tonawanda News probably one of the longest tenured from 93 to 2009. And probably as long as uh, Lou Simon had bat been there, uh, typically it was a place where guys didn't hang around a long time. But certainly you did. Uh, and, if you, and you came there uh, right about about 10 years after you graduated from Canisius. Right. Um, after I graduated from Canisius, I worked at Canisius. And then I worked at Stony Brook University on Long Island. Did not want to stay on Long Island. I actually moved back to take a job at, at Niagara County Community College. And I worked for the World University Games. And Bob Salzman hired me right after the World University Games ended. And I stayed at Tunnel One News for a long time, but we could see the writing on the wall. Unfortunately, I don't think people realized it was gone, how, how good a local paper we had. You don't get that anymore. You don't get the high school coverage. Now, and you don't see, you know, we were newspaper clippings. We were, we were the scrapbook paper. People read us, you know, for their kids. And that's, you don't get that. And I'm not knocking the Buffalo News because they have, they serve a purpose, but you just don't see that local journalism covering the high schools and the local community as far as school boards, all that. You don't see that with the big papers. And I think that's a void that people did not realize what it would be like to have that void till the Town of the News, the Lockport Union Center Journal, the Dyna Journal, or just all those papers have gone by the wayside. How many stringers did you have back then, or what type of budget did you have to be able to cover all the Niagara, the old Niagara Frontier League schools, the Ten Moors, the Tonawandas, maybe venture into Niagara Falls a little bit? I had one part time writer. It was uh, Ken Fox and then Ernie Green. Uh, we had a couple of stringers who went on to pretty good stuff. Dave Leventhal, who is now working for Business Insider and covers politics. He's a Kenmore West grad. I had Ernie, Ernie Green was one of my full-timers. Dave Rickey, who was just, went from being a very raw writer to just such a polished writer who had just such an enthusiasm to cover high school sports and a couple other stringers. We did a lot uh, with almost nothing as far as budget. Um, let me find, let me pull out a quarter because I think that's about what we had weekly budget. It was uh, no, we did not have a, a lot of budget. Um, the publisher Joe Armenia could pinch a penny till you could see Lincoln on both sides. Wow, talk about um, the high school sports coverage that you guys did at that during the, during that time from '93 to 2009. Could things change because the internet popped up at that point? and uh, added another dimension to, to newspapers at that point. Yeah, when we first started covering, um, it, it, you know, obviously football was big, and if you thought high school football was big in TNT, come down here, come down here to Texas. It's, it's amazing. But it wasn't just football. We covered the other sports, too. We, you know, when I was there, NT was a state powerhouse in volleyball. Uh, and he had a successful softball program under T.K. Murphy. Um, 
there were so many other good sports that uh, we tried to cover them all. And obviously you couldn't cover all of them. But there were so many successful sports programs, like Eberwine with baseball in Tonawanda, in North Tonawanda. You had Cindy Bresky coaching Tonawanda. You had Matt Chimero over at Kenmore Westwood softball. You had Jack Blanche at Kenmore East ba girls basketball. And, of course, the legendary Dick Harvey uh, over at Ken West. And then I also got to cover LaSalle because they were in the Niagara Frontier League with um, – under Pat Monty. I will tell you this, probably one of my biggest memories, I covered a game in the pit between LaSalle and Dick Hardy's team. And one of the officials was Mike Lasky, who was a big time college official. And I'm covering the game and I thought it was a well-officiated game. After the game, Dick Hardy complained he did not get one call in his favor. Pat Monty complains he did not get one call in his favor. So right there, I knew the officials had done a good job. So, but yeah, there were, there were some legendary coaches, legendary people. Legend, yeah, there were so many. And unfortunately, I left before North Carolina won football when it won the state title, but I do remember covering them a couple of times um, in Orchard Park for the Section 6 championships. And of course, TNT games were always fun. Usually more fun for North Tonawanda, but a couple of times Tonawanda did pull a surprise. You were there a, a, a several uh, time period where uh, they were closing the old Better Stadium mm -hmm. behind behind um, the junior high school. And also, I believe when the school board, uh, the budget was defeated and the uh, wasn't it a, a sports booster club that came out to, to save NT football? Yes, yes, they did. I, I do remember that. I you know, do remember Mike Maranto and some of the other players. You, you talk about I was there for the opening of the new um, football stadium uh, at the high school, and which now I believe the press box is named after the legendary Dick Grapes, right. who, who was a classy, classy person. But yeah, it was kind of fun covering the games both at the old Better Stadium and at the new stadium, along with... Uh, the now defunct uh, Clint Small Stadium in Tonawanda. So there were some very good memories of, about those games. And what was North Tonawanda? Go ahead. North Tonawanda as well. What was it like? Uh, what was the feeling of the community when they were shutting down the old uh, George Vetter Stadium behind the junior high school? I honestly think at first they were kind of disappointed, but when I, I think they saw the plans for the new stadium and then saw how nice the new stadium was that they were accepting of it. I mean, let's face it, at the end, Vetter Stadium was not a great facility. You know, let, let's, let's be honest. Um, and the new stadium was one of the nicer ones in Western New York when, when it was built. It had a nice press box, um, a better track. better. I, I just think overall, once they saw what the new stadium was like, I think the community went from a little bit of disappointment to hey let's let's accept this this is this is nice because better stadium had seen better days by the time they closed how was the athletic director john to sarah how did he handle that uh with the closing of the stadium and also uh, with that school board uh that that boat uh that uh poo poo does athletics that year i think john john was put in a tough position uh, he really was. I mean, we, John was not my favorite person, but John had a very, very tough job because you're trying to please so many people and trying to keep everything going that um, I think John had some good advice between uh, Dr. George with the school board and a couple others. So he wasn't he wasn't forced to do it by himself. I think the school board gave him a lot of help. And I do think that once everybody realized, hey, we're getting a we're getting a nice facility. We're not getting we're not getting dumped on. We're getting a, a much better facility. And Dr. George and the others at the school board did a really good job of promoting that, saying, hey, this is what you're getting. Be happy about it. And it really was. And I think that first time when people went to a game there and saw how nice it was, that really that really changed a lot of minds. Although if you want to see some stadiums, come down here to 
Texas. I mean, unbelievable. It's, it's, just, it's the epitome of Friday Night Lights. There's no yes. doubt about that. Yeah, I mean, there are stadiums down here. The, the, big, the best stadium outside of um, whatever, whatever they call it this year, Highmark, whatever, is UB Stadium. And most high school stadiums, many high school stadiums down here are better than UB Stadium. Wow, that's tremendous. And they're better than Lamar Stadium, which is Lamar's a Division I um, FCS. And most a lot of the high school stadiums are better than what the, the colleges have here. You were very fortunate to cover Dave Anasazi and Eric Jancy. What do you remember about those those two NT coaches? Oh, Dave Anastasi and Eric were both really good to deal with. Um, Dave, you know, wasn't sure when I first got here. He goes, he used to probably think, oh, another new writer. But uh, he and I hit it off pretty well from day one. He was always very cooperative. And both Dave and Eric would, you know, were, were very good with quotes. Um, very good about getting us the information. It's funny. I watched one of the videos the other day of um, Joe Shiflett, the ta- former Sweet Home in Tonawanda. Yeah, you know, with his gruff voice. And Ernie Green and I used to always laugh. We were going to get at least one quote of, we didn't tackle well, or we didn't hit enough in that. But, but Joe was good to deal with. But yeah, Dave and um, Eric both seemed very appreciative of the coverage we gave them. Even when they lost, um, they knew we were trying to be fair. We, we we were not yellow journalists at all. We wanted to be fair. And sometimes that was frustrating because some coaches did not, in other sports, did not want to call in scores when they lost. And I had to deal with that when I was uh, started out as a sports information director with coaches not wanting to call me to give me scores when they lost. And we don't want that in the paper. Well, you're not going to get anything in the, win, in the paper when you win then. So, but not... Most of the coaches at, at NT, not only um, Anastasia, boy, that brings back some memories in Eric Chancy, but Terry Brocious, TK Murphy, many of the other coaches were all very good to deal with. And I think that starts from Dr. Uh, from John, from Tessera on the way on the way down. So in your time at the Tonawanda News, you, you mentioned Bob Salzman hired you. Who else did you work with uh, d- d- over the years before you left? Okay, well, in sports, there was Tim Schmidt. Um, and then, like I said, uh, my, my uh, part-timers were Ken Fox and Ernie Green. Um, Jor- we had Joe Armini as the um, publisher, and then Terry Shaw came in. Terry put me in news for a year, and I really learned. Um, that was really a good experience for me, dealing with something other than sports. I had never done that, so that was a good experience. Uh, Joe Amadeo was in community sector. Of course, Barbara Tucker. Right. Everybody, I think almost everybody in North Tonawanda knows Barbara Tucker. Um, Bonnie Sealing was in sales. Um, Bonnie was the uh, wife of former Sabre player Rick Sealing. Uh, there are Joe Jenko, Steve Trask. Uh, there are so many. Uh, Frank Scally in the business side. Charlie, I can't. Yeah, I just it's hard to remember everybody, and I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forget somebody, and they're gonna yell at me for that. Joel Hazley, whatever. I'm, I know I'm gonna hear from somebody saying you didn't mention me. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Uh, how about Jay Skursky? Was he part of during your Jay, time period? Because well, uh, uh, after a while, they when uh, community newspaper holdings bought us, and I was over at um, the Gazette for a while. Was sports editor there too. That's when I first got to know Jay Skirsky. He he was at the Gazette with me. So, what do you remember about the TNT games? Uh, great crowds. Uh, surprisingly, uh, Tonawanda, even though it was much smaller, staying competitive a lot of times. But I just do remember the crowds making sure I got got there early. And one time they didn't want to put us in the press box because um, cable was coming. And like, look, we've covered all the games. Now you're not going to put us in. So they they did they did find a seat for us because you know we had done so much for them. But yeah, I do remember there was just it was a fun rivalry. You know, between the parades and everything. I, I think sometimes it seemed like the game was almost secondary to all the uh, pregame and postgame activities. 
I do remember the one time the Tonawanda one and our publisher, Joe Armenia, was a Tonawanda grad. And we were we were a black and white paper. We didn't have, this is back in the 90s where we didn't have a lot of color. He stopped and made sure the headline was in color because in maroon because Tonawanda won. He would never put the headline in color if North Tonawanda won, but when Tonawanda won, he wanted that color headline. So, but yeah, um, those were a lot of fun. I, I think there was a, a good friendship rivalry. I mean, obviously you're playing to win, but I think a lot of people just looked for the, the tailgating, the pregame, the postgame. And we, we would work for about four weeks getting that um, special Tonawanda TNT game section uh, produced. We wanted to make sure we did it right because we felt the kids deserved it. I lost my train of thought. Uh, bu- 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 um, well, there's a train that used to go by uh, Clint Small Stadium. The Amtrak train would go by in about the third quarter every Friday night game. There's there's a lot of stories about Clint Small Stadium where uh, even the, back in the 70s where players were NT players were pelted from the the train tracks over there uh, during the warmups and whatnot. You know there were, everything was left on the field and 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 rightfully so because it was such a great rivalry at that point and been going on for years. Do you think looking at it right now and Tonawanda hasn't had a lot of success in the TNT game. Do you think that the that rivalry should continue? Yeah, uh, it, it's it's one of the oldest rivalries in the country. And yes, um, North Tonawanda is uh, much bigger population wise and enrollment wise. But hey, sometimes um, David beats Goliath, and that's it. And I, I still think people look forward to that. I mean, you know, at a time when a lot of traditions are dying out. I think you still need that tradition. And I think as long as the two schools are there, you have that rivalry. It's the same with Ken East, Ken West. I think, yeah, you have that rivalry. And yeah, it's only one game here. It's not like it's, and it's not, doesn't count the league standing since, uh, you know, there's no more NFL for football, National now your Funchy League for football. So. I say, yeah, keep it going. I, I think people still look forward to it. I mean, I, I've i been gone for 12 and a half years, and you know, I still hear people talking about TNT when I go onto Facebook about what's going on in Western New York. So, yeah. Who were some of the, the, the football players or athletes, I should say, because there, there were a lot that um, impressed you so much that you, you, can, you can vividly recall uh, their exploits even today? Uh, Mike Maranto, for one, um, definitely, and his sister, Katie, was a great football player. I got to tell you, the one that I remember the most, just because of his name, was from Tonawanda, and that was Brian Piccolo. Right. And if you know the uh, the movie, Brian's song. Well, one time we were doing that, and we Brian, Pic- he, Brian Piccolo from Tonawanda had no idea about who Brian Piccolo was yeah, the, from, um, from Brian's song. And it reminded me today because uh, there was a thing um, on Twitter from this day in Buffalo Sports History. They were talking about an all-star game that was played at War Mo- college all-star game that was played in War Memorial in 65. Roger Staubach, one of the air players in that game was Brian Piccolo. So, yeah. But, yeah, just, just the name Brian Piccolo. And Brian was a pretty good fall. Another one was Dan Paulson from North Tonawanda, great lineman, ended up um, getting a scholarship and playing at UB. And there just some, I'm not going to remember them all, but yeah, Mike Morano just always stood out. And actually, Mike's got, Mike's in my old profession now. Mike's uh, working, I believe, at Damon College as a sports information director. So, Damon, kinda, uni- he, he Damon University now. Research. What's that? It's Damon University now. They they mm-hmm. they they renamed and relabeled and, and rebranded. Okay. And so. Mike did some writing for us uh, when he was going to college too. So he was one of our, my stringers too. So good guy. The whole the whole Moranto family. I mean, that's one of the one of the big families in North on Wanda Lake. So not only Mike, but I, his sister Katie was a great softball player and ended up playing um, and starring for Kenesha's College under one of my best friends, Mike Rappel. 
small world it is in Western New York, no doubt about that. If you if you're at a a party and you're having a conversation with people um, who you don't know, and they they ask you you know where you're originally from and what did you originally do, and you want to use the Tonawanda News uh, time there, what would you tell people? Um, well, obviously, you know, a lot of people in Texas want to know, hey, does it snow Buffalo 12 months a year? Despite with the picture on my town of one news thing, no, it doesn't snow in Western Air 12 months a year. Uh, what I tell people about the town of one news is that we were a very good community daily newspaper. We, we came out six days a week by telling them we, we treated high school athletes um summer athletes and even colleges we could i did a lot i cover a lot of college um wrestling and other sorts of but we treated them like the pros and we are very proud of that we are very proud that we were shining the spotlight on student athletes and i still think you know that that was one of my proudest things even as a sports information director my job was to shine the um spotlight onto others and i think we did a good job at that and that we made so we um you know we're not we're not ep we're not the buffalo news but i guarantee you there are a lot of lot of scrapbooks and a lot of hangings on refrigerators from what we wrote in those years so yeah we're very we were very proud of what we did and i just did a thing a couple of weeks ago with ernie green and uh, ken fox and jack carlos about that too yeah that was, that was one of part of our proudest part of our careers. During your tenure at, at the Tonawana News, you ever look back and, and uh, regret anything or uh, would like to second guess any decisions that, that you made or were made for you? Yeah. Um, I kind of wish, uh, and this is me and our part, I would kind of wish we had a little bit bigger staff to be, we could cover more things. One of the toughest things was come postseason because we covered uh nt tonawanda star point a little bit ken east ken west o'hara and a couple others it was like oh my god when we had four teams in the playoffs it's like who do we cover we're you know in a way we're like oh when a team got defeated we're like oh good now we can focus more on on, on another team because it was hard and we would get the calls how come you cover this game and not this game well, we weren't going to go all the way out to Alden to cover your team. When you, you so, but that was tough. But we, we kind of wish we would have had a, a little bit bigger staff. Um, as far as what you, do we look back and regret anything? Um, I can't really. I mean, I when I first started, you know, I, I did get a, I did misspell a name or two now and then, but that's what happens when coaches don't give you rosters and you're trying to, <laughs> uh, but no, I, I don't think regret. I think we, uh, we did the best we could. Um, I think sometimes people do, we would get calls. Well, you put the varsity swimming in, but you're not covering the JV as well. Well, or how come you're covering football more than swimming? Well, how many people are at the TNT game? How many people are at the swimming? People didn't realize we're also a business. And, you know, a, a, a full page story on front page sharing cross country is not going to sell papers. TNT game is going to sell papers. So we had to try and do that, try and cover everybody, but also, you know, we didn't have unlimited pages. You talked, you touched upon the business aspect of it. What's your reaction to today's? Uh community papers where they may just have a one-man sports staff and it's cut way back it used to be a two and maybe with some stringers and now it's one and they are stretched really thin yeah um oh i i, I can realize that because we thought we were stretched thin with uh myself part-time or a couple of stringers i just think it, it doesn't do it justice um you want to cover these kids like they're pros and the whole journalism thing has changed. There's not so much game stories anymore. A lot of times, it's 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 more like a little bit of recap and more featurey. Um, it, it's different because you're competing not only with uh, the papers, but you're competing with the internet, and everybody wants things in, instantaneous. And no one, no one, every and everyone wants to see, you know, the score. Oh, they won. They look on Twitter. Oh, okay. 
No one's going to read that 14 inch story anymore. They're looking for something quick. So that's changed. I, I just look now, even I, when I read the um, game recaps uh, on AP for hockey, baseball, whatever, it's it's totally changed. And I think you have to do that for high schools. It's, but the whole thing with high schools as compared to pros is with high school, you're trying to get as many names in there as possible. So those people will see their name, buy it and put it, uh, put it on the refrigerator or in the scrapbook or yeah, post it online. So yeah, it, it's a little different, but there's still the main thing is trying to get a story out and try and put a positive spotlight on these kids. We, for the most part, we did not want to put a negative spotlight, you know, Sometimes you have to. A kid gives up a three run home run, you're going to have to mention the name. I will tell you one story. TK Murphy called in a softball game one time, and three kids had three hits. So I listed the names in alphabet order. That's one parent called, uh, called me and then called the publisher saying, How come his daughter wasn't named first? Because she's the star of the team. She's the one who should have gotten her name first. So publisher's like, well, the next time you do it, just mention her name first. Okay. Three days later, I cover them. Guess who struck out with two runners on base to end the game? Guess who got her name mentioned first? Guess what parent called the paper complaints? <laughs> you know, we, that's that old adage with the, you know, High school sports would be great if you could eliminate the parents and out of the equation, you know. Exactly. I umpired I mean, for a number of years. I, I totally get that as well. I was a baseball catcher in Little League, and I, I got it at a very young age, just hearing the stuff from, from the backstop at a mm -hmm. very young age and, and some of the vile stuff that came out of people's mouths back then. So it, it is what it is at that point. It's, it's unfortunate. Do you think that Local papers, they so-called local papers are really local newspapers anymore. No, uh, so much is um, uh, wire service stories. They're trying to get, you can get everything off, off of AP or other things, and then it's just filler, and, and they don't have the staff to really, really cover the local news. And I want to re go back and one thing you mentioned, who else did we work for the paper? And I'm going to, I would be remiss if I did not mention the late Doug Smith. Yes. His base pass column. I just bought, I just got his book. Um, his son just did a book, The Best of Doug Smith. And Doug and I were really good friends. And even after I moved down here, Doug and I stayed in touch. And the, um, when he died, that was kind of sad. It was one of the saddest days I remember um, dealing with a journalist's death as, um, one of the things that I did cover in the Tonawanda News, other than I covered the bandits really well. In fact, I went to Philadelphia for that first championship game when they won. There were only two reporters from West New York there, myself and Tom Borelli. Tom and I became really good friends. And you know, and a thing about that is um, <coughs> when I worked at Duval College, I had to work some games at All-High Stadium. I bumped my head on that press box then where Tom Borelli, you know, eventually hit his head and, and remember he died in that tragic accident at All-High Stadium. So right. Tom was uh, one of my good friends. I learned a lot working with Tom. And then I also, when I first started stringing, even before I started at the Tyler News from Bill McGrath and Bill Wolcott. They were first rivals, but then they became uh, colleagues. But even when we were rivals, we worked together because um, we were all for the same thing, to try and do, do the best stories. We weren't trying to um, stab each other in the back. And Bill Wolcott and Bill McGrath were great people. Well, it was always good. That it tried, you always wanted to get the scoop on something. Mm -hmm. you, wanted, oh, yes. you wanted to get the best angle. There's no doubt mm -hmm. about that. You know, I think today as well, too, you know, with my my friends in the media as well, you know, we're all in it together because it's a matter of survival at this point. Mm -hmm. I was really good friends uh, when I was working at Canisius and I was the advisor for the student paper. There was um, a student writer there. Um, I guess he's done pretty well for himself. Mike Harrington, he's done pretty well for mm -hmm. himself since yes. then. So. Mike oh, and I were, were, were really good friends. Um, so, and I still read him. I still like to annoy him on Twitter at times. Speaking of which, do you think Twitter is a good thing? 
Um, yes and no. Yeah. Um, it's sometimes it's good to get the, the quick stuff out. And I like it where you, you can link your story on Twitter, but it seems sometimes uh, other people just like, they don't even look at Twitter and see this. And, and you can get so much false information out there because everybody thinks they're, they're a journalist. <laughs> and there's so much false information out there that it takes away from the people who are accredited, who are really accredited journalists because everybody's putting information out there. And there's so much poorly written and just false information out there. So I think Twitter can be a good thing, but unfortunately I think oftentimes the negative, the negative outweighs the positive on Twitter. Got a few minutes left. What would you want to tell your Western New York friends? Um, I don't know if you you have a lot of contact with any of them right right now, but we have a good uh, viewing base here on this YouTube channel. What would you want to tell people about how Pat Murray is doing these days? Oh, Pat Murray is doing fine. Um, Pat Murray got out of athletics um, through no volition of his own when a new athletic director came into Lamar and basically got rid of everybody. And Lo and behold, he was forced to resign a couple of months ago when he was charged with um, several allegations of misconduct. So karma is still alive. Uh, but in a lot of ways, that may have been a good thing for me. I don't miss the 80 hours a week working in college athletics. Um, I'm working for the Health and Human Service Commission. I'm helping people. And I'm still involved in athletics, doing some stringing for one of the daily papers during Friday night football games. And I'm the official scorer um, for the local high, uh, local Catholic high school for basketball and softball here. So I'm still keeping involved in athletics because I'll never want to totally get out of it. But I'm able to spend more time with my family. I'm, in, I'm enjoying it. And, and I'm still following the Sabres. In fact, I don't know if you can see my shirt here. It's uh, the Choose Love from... Uh, that the Sabres, Bills, and Bandits put out after that unfortunate event at the Tops Market. So I still follow Western New York sports. I'm a Canisius grad. I'm still I'm still a Golden Griffs fan. I still follow them. And um, and it was last year was tough because I'm a diehard Cleveland Guardians fan. You think that's easy for me to say? Just so the Indians. But last year watching the Blue Jays play in Buffalo was kind of fun and. Having done a lot of streaming for AP during the Bison days, and your Sabres, I, I kind of miss doing that. I would have loved to have been able to cover a Major League Baseball game at Coca-Cola Field or Salem Field now, whatever it is. It's, it's had more names than Elizabeth Taylor had why uh, husbands, but it's um, but yeah, I, I'm doing well. I'm enjoying it. Like I said, I've I've only been back for one day since I moved here in 2009, uh, and that was when I was at Lamar. We came to play Canisius in women's basketball. We flew out on Black Fr- on Black Friday, played on Saturday, and flew out after the game. So I got to try and see everybody in like a 24-hour period. So, but yeah, I, I do miss Western New York in a lot of ways, but I am doing well in some ways. I, I'm probably doing better if I, uh, financially since I got out of college athletics. Um, so college athletics is always a passion for me, but. You don't do any, you don't go into journalism, you don't go into media relations in college athletics for the money. So but it'll always be in my blood somehow. Pat Murray, I want to thank you so much. It's a pleasure. First of all, it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, love spending the time with you. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart to, to give us that sports writer's perspective of how athletics were in uh, the Tonawandas during your time period of 93 to 2009. I wish you well, be well, and once again, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate it.